Seven and a half hours. That is the length of the MCAT test, and in that time, you'll be tested on pretty much everything you've learned during your first years of undergraduate study. Knowing how to study for such a long and important test can be tricky, and students often don't know where to begin and when they should start studying for the MCAT. So that'll be the topic of today's video. So stick around as I'll be telling you when you should start studying for the MCAT, and I'll give you some tips for how to study for the MCAT along with a sample study schedule. Before we get started, hi, I'm Nadine Evans with BMO Academic Consulting. Be sure to subscribe on whatever social media channel you're watching this from now so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. If you want us to help you get into medical school, click on the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. So let's start with some of the MCAT basics because you need to know what I'm going to discuss first so you can understand when to start studying for the MCAT. The MCAT stands for Medical College Admissions Test and it's a computerized multiple choice test developed by the AAMC. Although there are a few medical schools that don't require the MCAT, almost all schools in the US and some schools in Canada have it as a requirement for medical school admission. There are even some graduate and professional programs that also accept the MCAT in lieu of another standardized test. It just depends. So there are four different sections to the MCAT. There's the chemical and physical foundations of biological systems, biological and biochemical foundations of living systems, psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior, and the critical analysis and reasoning skills section known as CARS. The first three sections I mentioned are the content meat of the exam, and students will be tested on their knowledge of general chemistry, organic chemistry, introductory physics, introductory biology, biochemistry, psychology, and sociology. Each section is made up of 59 questions and have a minimum time limit of 95 minutes. The CAR section is different in that it doesn't test examinees on the specific content knowledge. Instead, it's focused on your ability to read, understand, and analyze social science and humanities passages. Some students actually find this section to be the most difficult because it's based on a different skill set. The CAR section contains slightly less questions than the other sections at 53 and is capped at 90 minutes. There are short breaks in between sections, and then there's a longer mid-exam break, making the entire exam roughly seven hours and 30 minutes. Each section is scored individually, with 118 being the lowest possible score and 132 being the highest score. These individual section scores are then added to give you an overall score between 472 and 528. Total scores also correlate to a percentile rank, which basically just tells you the percentage of examinees that receive the same score or a lower score than you did. It's a good way to know how you compare to other test takers. So knowing when you should take the MCAT is closely related to when you should start studying for the MCAT. You should only write the test when you feel 100% ready and confident in your ability to do well. So when is that? When you're consistently scoring well over multiple full-length tests and in lots of different practice questions. So when should you start studying for the MCAT? Well, really, from the day you started your pre-medical coursework, you technically began your preparation, and that's because most of the material covered on the MCAT is taught during your first two years of undergraduate study. This is probably why most people decide to write the MCAT after their second year of university. So some students take this opportunity to begin studying for their MCAT right away and at every opportunity that they can. They'll study during the term, summer, and winter breaks. This is an excellent strategy because you're basically just ensuring that you stay current on what you've learned and it also ensures that it stays fresh in your mind. It's definitely a lot easier to use review as a refresher rather than feeling like you have to learn all the concepts and information all over again, essentially because you forgot it over time. Students who adopt this strategy start preparing roughly 18 months ahead of their anticipated start date. So if you weren't overly proactive and haven't been reviewing your coursework, don't panic. As long as your MCAT exam is ideally six months away, you likely still have enough time for preparation. In general, it's recommended to spend between 200 to 300 hours of dedicated study. So now, what do I mean by dedicated study? I'm talking about ongoing, regular, fairly intense study. So this is where the length of time that you study for will vary between students. For example, one student who can dedicate, say, 10 hours a week to studying may require six to seven months in order to adequately prepare. 
Another student may be able to dedicate 20 to 30 hours per week studying, meaning that they could feel you know, very well prepared in only three months. Think about what period of time will be best for you to study during and work from there to determine when you should take the MCAT. Of course, accounting for when it would actually be required for you to have completed the MCAT by in order to apply to your program of choice. So let's cover four different steps that you should take to begin your preparation. First, you need to learn everything you can about the MCAT. The AAMC has a variety of super useful resources on its website for individuals taking the MCAT. All students have to download and read the PDF titled MCAT Essentials, which includes information on registration, policies, and test day information. You'll have to sign off that you've read and understood this on test day, so make sure you work through this document right away so you know what to expect and in turn, what's expected of you. Second, you should determine your baseline. So what do I mean by baseline? Well, I'm talking about your current level of knowledge today. You need to be able to assess where you stand and how much you already know so you can determine how much studying you're going to need and in turn, what amount of time you'll need to set aside to get you there. So to do this, you have to take a full length practice exam. The AAMC has this on their website and of course you can also find other reputable companies offering full length exams online. As painful as it may seem, the best way to complete this exam is to do it all in one sitting, just like on the real test. So the reason you want to do this is because it's the best way to simulate the real tests and all the emotions and stress that may come with taking it. Plus, it's a much needed way to assess your pacing. Remember, the MCAT only allows a certain amount of time for each section. So if you're really running behind, you're going to suffer in other sections. The other good thing about doing a full length practice test is that you'll learn what areas you're good at and which areas you really struggle in. Last but not least, you can identify other hurdles you may encounter during a test of this length. So maybe you felt really fatigued, you know, did you have trouble concentrating? Were you listening to your stomach rumble the entire time because you were starving? Knowing these potential weaknesses in advance will help you adjust your strategy accordingly. Perhaps you learn that you have to sleep for nine hours before the test, or maybe you need to eat a breakfast full of protein in order to get through to the first long break. So the next step is where you start gathering resources. So this is basically everything that you need to effectively study. This includes course textbooks, other relevant books, practice tests, links to useful videos, and sample questions. First, make sure that you're focusing on resources that will provide you with the content you need. So for example, you don't need to worry about finding other practice tests right away because you already know your baseline. Now you need to study, learn, and review before you take another practice test. So after you've collected these content resources, then you can later move on to analysis-based resources such as the practice questions and tests. It's also a good idea to take an online or in-person preparation course. Most people find that they're both worth the time and the money. Last but not least is to take all of this information and all of these resources and craft your very own study schedule. So this is essential as it will help you organize what you need to do each week in order to stay on track and progress through your studies. Otherwise, having all these resources and information will feel overwhelming and you won't even know where to begin. It's very smart to begin preparing with your study schedule six months before your test date. That will give you adequate time to get through everything and retain everything that you've learned. So I've included a link in the description to a sample study schedule that you can use to help you craft your own. So with that said, this wraps up another one of our videos. Hopefully you found it helpful, so please subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions. If you want us to help you get into medical school, click the link either above or below this video to schedule your free initial consultation. Thanks again, see you next time.